What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back for another season of American Horror Stories. I can't remember if I said I was going to review another season or not, but since there's only four episodes, I believe that's going to happen for this season, um, and they put it all out on one day, you know, I said, why not? Um, but anyway, we get into the first episode, which is called Bestie. And if you know, for the American Horror Stories that comes on on Hulu is different from them. It's not in conjunction with the American Horror Story that comes on TV. So with the American Horror Stories, it's basically like an anthology. So it's different stories each episode for those that don't know. But this is season three and this is episode one and it's called Bestie. And we get into the episode and we see these like teenagers. They're at a school and they're doing a play, Macbeth, right? Um, and then you see at one point they have the cauldron out there. They're pouring some stuff into the cauldron and everything. And they got a drink from it. And just about everybody that drank from that cauldron. I said, first of all, why are we drinking from this? Okay. I don't care if it's a play or not, baby, we can fake like we drinking it. Okay. I'm not going to put this in my mouth. I don't know if that cauldron is clean or not. You know, it is a stage prop and it's a lot of stuff that's going around these days. So no, I'm not going to put my lips on there. You know what I'm saying? But um, they did that and they wind up throwing up right in front of everybody. Mind you, when the show came on and we see this going on, I'm thinking that this is like a dress rehearsal. Had no idea until they panned out after everybody started vomiting on the stage that this was actually the play in process. Audiences out there and everything. So if you watched American Horror Story um, last season with the... Uh, it's called American Horror Story NYC. The guy who was the killer outside of the virus of HIV, AIDS, being a killer, but the actual physical killer that was chopping up gay people, gay men in New York, he is on here playing the music teacher, right? The music teacher slash chorus teacher. That's what it is. And so he comes out on the stage. I like him. You know, he has such a unique look, but he is very, very versatile because... He plays on another show. I think it's called Somewhere Anywhere. Somewhere, some, someone, somewhere, whatever. I think, I think it comes on uh, HBO or Showtime. Either way, it's, it's a good show. Look it up, okay? Um, but he plays the teacher. And he has to come out there and say, hey, 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 hey. Oh, my God, close some curtains because this is not a part of the play. I said, I'm pretty sure everybody know that them throwing up on stage is not part of the play. Then it goes to three months earlier. So they're going back in time to before we get to this part. And when that happens, we see this girl. Um, her name is Shelby or Shelly. We're just going to call her Shelly because they call her username is Shelly Belly on this thing. She's looking at this um, drag queen that's on doing a live stream, I guess, on YouTube or whatever. And uh, she goes by anorexia in the way that she plays uh, spell it. It's a play on the word trigger warning anorexia. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, this is supposed to be, I guess, every, I don't know if everybody has this, but we see this often when people who are loners or don't know where they fit in or whatever they find something or someone either physically or online or whatever that they can attach themselves to that they get so consumed by that gives them encouragement whether they know them or not and that gets them through the day and that is what uh this particular uh streamer does for shelby or shelly you know what i'm saying and so basically what wound up happening is her and her father, they moved to a new house, a new neighborhood because the mother passed away. She had pancreatic cancer. She was a teacher at one point. And so now they moved. And of course, it's going through that whole teenage stuff or whatever. Um, and she's a little oddball, you can tell. Okay. And she reminds me of, oh my goodness, why every time I need to know her name, I cannot remember her name. I'm so sorry, y'all, because they look like they could be sisters. Let me see. American Horror Story. Is it Vajra Flip? No, that ain't her. What is Judy Garland's granddaughter name? 
Damn. I'm so sorry, y'all, because this is going to bother me. Billy Lord. Billy Lord. That's who it is, okay? She reminds me of a younger Billy Lord, okay? And, uh, you know, with her glasses on, she got these glasses that look like they should be for somebody that's like 45 or up, okay? They do make her look a little older, you know, because of the way her hair is. I guess it makes her look a little homely. I don't know. They was trying to make her just look a little bit homebody, homely than what she really is, right? And of course, when you get into a new school and you have that clique of mean girls and mean guys that's gonna be making fun of you, she's in choir, and she's with their teacher. They're doing the scales and all this stuff, whatever. And everything is going right. And you got this one black boy who's the first one that starts talk, uh, singing. And he does it right. And then you got that group of mean kids that's over there being um, controlled by this one girl. And they're just giggling and making fun of her. Mind you, she did nothing. All she did was come in there and be herself. And, you know, they're making fun of her glasses. They're making fun of her um, hair. Trying to say that she looks like a, um, a grandma. And I'm sitting here like, if that's the only thing that you got, you really need to pick up and step up your, your re-game. And your, you know, I don't want to say bullying game, but if you're going to come for somebody, you really need to step it up. Because that's kind of lame. That's kind of whack. And that's just too easy. And it's just like, girl, what? You really think that's something, you know, but it is what it is. It hurts her feeling to the point that she threw. It looked like she threw her book at the girl and it hit her in her nose. But I'm sitting here like at first I had to rewind it because we don't really see her picking it up and throwing it at her. We just see it flying over there hitting the girl in the nose. And I'm sitting here like, oh my God, is this some Carrie type of stuff? Do she got telekinesis going on or whatever? But she gets in trouble. Um, The teacher said, meet me at my office at the class. Come to find out. He is not mad at her for what she did. You know, he understands the plight of being like the eyeball out and, you know, just wanting to snap sometimes and, you know, just saying how they can relate to each other because he used to be friends with her mother when they were in school. So he knew about her, knew how much of a good personality and a good person she was and everything. And, you know, ha trying to connect to her. You experienced the loss. I experienced the loss. Me and my wife, we tried to have a baby. Didn't happen. And then once we did get pregnant and get ready to give birth, the baby was stillborn because the baby died because the umbilical cord got trapped around the neck, you know, uh, tangled around the neck, right? And so, you know, I, I, I respect him because this is what a teacher, I feel like teachers should do. Y'all teachers these days, we need to become a little bit more personable with these kids because you never know what's going on with these kids, okay? Sometimes they just need to have somebody that actually give a damn about them. They, She gets out the freaking uh, office with him, and of course, here comes those uh, bullies again, and they're talking mess about her, and you know, if you're not, oh, why do you have gray hair? It's dusty blonde. Oh, it's dirty blonde and all this stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, leave her alone. She did nothing. They go home, she's at dinner with her father, and, you know, he's trying to get her to, he's just trying to make conversations, and I, I feel like <laughs> this is a struggle that we always see, more so when the mother died on TV, on these TV shows, the difficulties that the father has connecting with the kids, and we see this dynamic again happening because, you know, she's so in her world. She became so much more of a loner because her mother passed away. And her father is trying to get her out that shell, trying to see what's going on. He knows that something is going on in school. But at the same time, he's trying to connect, trying to get her to do the uh, play and stuff. And, you know, the only thing that she's really interested in doing is looking at this anorexia drag queen thing. That's Excuse me. What gives her comfort and what we see her watching throughout the show. Meanwhile, in one of the live chats or the live streams that was happening, um, once the show goes off, the chat box is still going, and somebody that says B B B somebody's profile that says B F F forever forever. You know what I'm saying? E V A pops up. No profile pic. 
and was like, hello, 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 you there? And I'm sitting here like, how did she know that she was talking to her? Because there's so many people that's up in this chat just, just going and, and, and saying whatever, you know what I'm saying? They're not really adding anybody or anything. So she decides to, you know, respond back to her and say, yes, hi, I'm here. They start chatting or whatever. And once they start chatting, old girl was like, you know, you want to do uh the person was like, you want a video chat? I said, excuse me? <laughs> First of all, I don't know you. Okay, we literally just started, you know, click, 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 click on the keyboard two seconds ago. And now you want a video chat? I said, baby, be careful because it could be some spam. It could be somebody trying to take your information. It could be somebody trying to put some malware on your computer. I'm going to need you to be careful. But because she's a child... Um, and she's, you know, looking for a friend. She's in this lonely place right about now. She went on ahead and started talking to this person. And she said that, you know, she may look a mess because, uh, she'd been crying. And the girl, the person was like, girl, please. So they wind up video chatting. And once we see the girl, it's this girl, <laughs> she's very much deformed. Okay. And they never really say what her age is. But she kept on talking about how, you know, and I truly don't feel like she was the age that she claimed that she was or what they trying to have us to believe because she's appeared to be older because of how deformed she was. You know what I'm saying? But then she's talking about how her father is cringe and her father don't let her do this and all of this stuff or whatever and talking very much like a teenage girl. You know what I'm saying? So at this point... I'm sitting here thinking like, girl, you getting catfish. Not necessarily saying that this ain't the person, you know, catfish in the sense that she ain't telling you all that all, all of what's going on, right? But again, she's in this spot where she just need a friend. And I do like the fact that regardless of how this person looked, she never gives her name. She just said, um, name sucks. Okay, I'm going to call you Shell Bell and you just call me Bestie. That's what you're going to call me. All right. I will say what I was trying to continue to say was I'm glad that she didn't look at her and be like, oh, my God, what the hell happened to you or whatever. It was instantly like, okay, cool. You talking to me. So what's up? And then they connected. Baby, let me just tell you something. It don't work like that for me, okay? It don't work like that for me. And what I mean about that is just because I see you and, you know, all of a sudden, baby, we start chat. Girl, hell no, we not friends. I'm not going to call you besties. I'm not going to let you in on my personal life like that. I mean, it was a little bit too soon. No, it wasn't a little bit too soon. It was way too soon. Baby, that is how desperate some people are for friendship, desperate for human companionship, just to have somebody talking to them to feel like they care and exist, okay? And she just started really talking to this one, this person, I'm going to call her a person because I'm not too sure that she literally was around her age or whatever. You know, she started talking about at one point, uh, when they get further along into the friendship where mind you, it's only been going on probably for a couple of months this, at this point, their friends, they've been besties since the first time they started chatting with each other would never be me. Would never be me. Uh uh. I don't trust you. I don't know you. Baby, why the back of your wall look like it's from 1920? What's going on? It's dusty back there. Mind you, people got stuff going on, but I'm just thinking like you can't put some um soap and water on the wall or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like shit happens. Like I need to clean my wall, okay? You know, it is what it is. But you mean to tell me y'all couldn't change the wallpaper? <laughs> You can afford a ring light. You can afford some soap and water. So, like, 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 what's going on? Okay? And, and I need you to turn the light on up in there. What's what's happening, baby? Um, A lot of stuff really wasn't adding up. Like, how close this girl got to her so quickly, you know? And, of course, she's preying on her desperation. She's preying on her vulnerability. And I said, that is so messed up because we see a lot of people fall through the cracks and get caught up in stuff like this. And then this is how they get taken advantage of. This is how they get, you know, um, all of a sudden come up missing because, oh, I've been talking to this person online for so-and-so, so-and-so time, and I feel like I know this person, so let me go meet up with 
with them and then never come back. Baby, ain't nobody got time to be playing like that, okay? Mama get home from school. She can't wait to talk to her bestie, okay? And they both are saying things like, I care for you. I love you. You're my best friend. Um... You know, at one point, Shelly, she started, uh, she made her face up like the drag queen that they watched. And it was decent for what it was, you know what I'm saying? And I say for somebody that first time doing it, she did a good job. She really did. You know, it's supposed to be over-exaggerated and all that stuff. And you got Bestie saying, girl, go to school like that. She said, girl, please, they already can't stare my ass and be on my ass. And you want me to go to school looking like this so they can do some more stuff to me? Remember what Anorexia said. We got to live through our fears. And once we live through our fears, we become the everything comes to us. And, you know, we can't be too scared. That's how we get over being scared. I said, you know, that is kind of true. But in this case, ain't nobody trying to do that. She said, even if it's just the eyeliner. So I'm thinking in my mind, if you watched the episode and you saw the makeup, I'm thinking the eyeliner and all that stuff going to be dramatic like that. Oh, no. It was just her putting a little bit of eyeliner on or whatever. Very subtle. But it was a different change from what we saw her when she initially came there. You know, she got the eyeliner and all that stuff on. She got her hair different. And she looked very much like a teenage girl. You know, had it in a ponytail with a little braid on the side. You know, she looked decent. She, had, she was feeling herself. She goes to the class and, you know, um, she's singing and everything. That same group of kids still giggling and chuckling at her or whatever. And then after the class, you know, they like, so because we called you a grandmama, that's why you wouldn't change your look and all that stuff through a little bit of eyeliner on. She said, bitch. <laughs> she said, you need to go eat shit, okay? Because... All the stuff that's coming out your mouth, you just need to go ahead and continue to eat shit or whatever. I mean, she's standing up for herself. And I was like, all right, Shelly, girl. That ain't exactly what she said, but basically she cussed the girl out without cussing her out and had her sitting there looking cuckoo. Mama was stuck. Her friends was even looking like they wanted to say, damn, girl, she read the hell out of you real swiftly, okay? But, um... We saw that little river, the black boy, he was just smiling at her and everything. And I was like, oh, he kind of like her. The whole time I'm like, well, how come you can't pick up on the fact that this boy kind of like you or whatever? You don't need to be talking to that person on the internet. You got a person that's right here in front of your face that actually dig you. You know what I'm saying? She said, are you constipated? You need to and call her, uh, you got a belly full of shit. <laughs> So she on there talking to her little friend again, got to tell her about the day and what happened. And now at this point, this is where things get a little bit crazy, okay? And they get a little bit amped up. And this is where the plan comes into play. This person is not to be trusted, Bestie, because Bestie, you do have those people that gives you encouragement, make you want to break about your shell. You can't be the same person that you want to be. And because it's not getting you anywhere and you need to break about your shell if you want this to happen, that to happen. Okay, you need to go live life. You need to go have fun. That's understandable. But, baby, we need to do that shit when it's, um, you know, it's legal and stuff, okay? Just because we don't like our daddies at this point because we're going through that teenage angst, you want me to go over there and to break one of his mugs that my mama gave him, that reminded him of my mama, and you're going to try to uh, uh, convince me by saying, oh, you know what, he care. it's a shame that he care about that mug more than he can care about you. I said, excuse me. Now, where did you get that from? Where did you get that from, Okay. And she still went and broke them up. Mind you, she telling her how she took her daddy's wallet and then wanted her to take her daddy's wallet. But she was like, my daddy is at work. So, no, I can't do that. And that's why she told her to break them up. Then she was like, I want to, she was basically starting to live through her. Because she has this disease or whatever, and she's so deformed, you know, she winds up telling her the reason why she looks the way that she looks is because she was adopted. She don't know who her mother is. Um, but she do know that her mother did a lot of drugs and stuff while she was pregnant with her. And it caused her to have this illness, uh, this type of disease or whatever that caused her to be deformed. Okay. And so she felt tr that she trusted her enough to tell her because she said, I never told anybody this. And so she can't go out the house. She's homeschooled. And when she said that, I said, girl, I don't believe you. 
Now, y'all want us to believe that this is a uh, teenager? Girl, I don't believe it at all, okay? It wasn't coming past. I said you don't come off like a teenager. And I know some some um, deformities have some people looking a little bit older or whatever, but they still have that teen mentality or that childlike mentality. She very much had an adult mentality, was trying to play like she was a teenager to connect with somebody that is an actual teenager. Catch what I'm saying, Okay. This girl wanted her to go out and do certain things so that she can live through her or whatever and do all the stuff that she couldn't do. Baby had her going to the store. She's stealing from the store. I said, now you go and you get all these snacks and stuff, right? You get all these snacks and stuff. You go to the register. They looking in the basket and you roll up out that bitch. I said, with the whole basket. Now, is that the only store in the city, in the town? You gonna have to find another store to go to to go get your snacks or whatever. You weren't thinking about that, huh? I mean, it was liberating for you, but at that moment in time, you weren't thinking that you know I can't go back to this store. Okay. Next thing you know, she getting um, she getting she cussing out her daddy. Oh fuck you! You don't know nothing. I said, excuse me. Where did all of this attitude come from? See, this is what happens when you have toxicity in your life and you have a toxic person that comes in and try to control you, okay? And you trying to live up to their expectation. Ain't no way in hell. I'm finna be doing the shit that somebody over the internet tells me to do and I ain't never met them in person. And they don't know shit about me for real, for real. And I don't know nothing about them for real, for real. Baby, it was given very much catfish. Y'all see them episodes of catfish when them people was up in the relationships talking to these people for like years on end. And I mean five plus years. And they're telling each other, um, they're getting mad because, oh, if you don't do this, I'm going to be done with you. And they do it so that they won't be done with them. Baby, that's what it was given. I said, baby, what type of desperation is going on? Then they do the play. She didn't get the parts in the play. And because of that... It goes to the three, what, what what we saw at the very beginning of the episode. It was her, a.k.a. Shelly, who put the stuff up in the, um, messed up the stuff and put it up in there and, and caused them to throw up and all that stuff. Mind you, River sees this. She's running away. She talking to old girl. She got her on her um, phone and she was like, go back. I want to see what happens. She was like, I can't go back there. No, I do it. What do we say, girl? What do we always go by? What's the rule? Live through our fears and all this stuff. Mind you, they was egging houses and all this stuff too. I said, child, you really trying to let this bald-headed bitch get you up in trouble. No shade. Well, that's just what it was. I mean, we got to call a spade a spade because at this point in time, I see exactly what's going on and I do not like her. Okay? She trying to get you in trouble, you know? And so when that happens, um, it's time for Halloween, right? <laughs> It's time for Halloween. And um Miss Mama shows up. As that drag queen. And one of the tags lines that she says is something about when you're um Life's a drag when your daddy's a F, the F word for derogatory term for um gay people. And, you know, <clears throat> she showed up to school like this and um, it was very offensive, especially to somebody who just don't know what's going on, okay? Or don't know about this drag person and that's what they do. The teacher was offended. Um, I don't know if um, <laughs> the teacher was offended because maybe he's secretly in the closet or whatever. And um, because the thing says life, life is a drag if your daddy don't know that you are, you know what I'm saying? And so she gets called out, you know what I'm saying? Her daddy had to come. It hurt the teacher's feelings. He was talking about something. I talk to you. I forgive you for this one day, okay? He leaves. It hurt him so deeply to the point where he took the whole semester off, you know, the next semester off. Um, her daddy took her and threw her in the closet, uh, uh, in the basement. I said, what? I said, well, baby, I said, sir, now I get it. We frustrated with the kids and all, but I don't think throwing her in the um, basement is not going to help. That's just going to, I feel like it's going to make things worse. 
okay? Because at this point in time, she's acting out. And I really do feel like when a parent has died, uh, when a child is young, um, and I mean teenage years and all that and younger, it's best to get the kid into therapy. Some way, somehow, go take your child to therapy so that they can work out these feelings that they have and learn a proper way to grieve or whatever. And you also need to go to family counseling therapy as well, you know, so that you can know how to parent afterwards, you know. So she gets down there and she finds her mother's old laptop because he took her phone. And that's what she was really pissed about because she couldn't talk to her bestie. She get on there and she hooked that laptop up and um, she she logs on and she's talking to Bestie. And Bestie basically like, you know, because they had this said at one point, Shelly was like, I'll do anything for you. You know what I'm saying? Earlier in the episode. And at this point, <laughs> Bestie took that to heart. Bestie was like, if you want to get up out of that, why don't you break your arm or uh, break a bone or something so that, um, you know, he could be like forced to take you to the hospital or whatever. So that means that you will have to get out of there. And she was like, girl, please, are you playing? Like, she took the hand like, I'm supposed to do like this and that's it. Girl, ain't nobody got time for that. She was like, girl, yes, that's what I'm saying. Didn't you say you would do anything for me? I will break any bone just to get out of here. I said, that's you. Okay, and baby, sometimes we be saying stuff in the figurative sense, all right? But at this point in time, I'm not going to break my arm just so I can get up out the basement and go to the hospital. What are you talking about? Mind you, they're going back and forth, and at one point, the daddy hears her talking to somebody, right? And she trying, he trying to figure out who he talk, she talking to. And I'm sitting here like, just keep on talking because he about to open up the door. You ain't got to go through all of that. Baby, why did she go ahead and let this person that she ain't never met in person, okay, convince her to put her arm in a joint, tie that thing up, and take the fucking... She took the hammer and she bam it. And she broke her arm. She broke it right at the wrist. I said, girl. Her daddy was like, what the fuck? I had to take her to the hospital. And it's like, whatever desired effect that Bestie wanted, it had the complete opposite reaction. Because once she went to the hospital, she wasn't talking to Bestie no more. You know what I'm saying? She turned back into the person that she was originally. She started wearing her hair the way that she used to. She started wearing her glasses the way that she used to. She gets to school. Um, River asks to sign her cast and introduces himself to her. And, you know, she was taken aback by it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he was like, don't we got to be friends first for us to, uh, you know, for me to sign cast and all that. So they start talking. Come to find out they both watched the uh, drag queen. Um, and they like choir and all that stuff, right? And so I'm sitting here like, huh. And then she keeps on getting messages from Bestie, okay? Where are you? I know you're not avoiding me. Um, hello, hello, hello. But at the same time, River is saying some of the things that Bestie has said, like, you're my bestie or best friend. And that's what Bestie always said. He even signed her her um cast like that. And she kind of caught it, but then she let it go because it's like, this is actual human live person in front of me that actually likes me and want to be my friend. And it could possibly be more. You know what I'm saying? We got a whole bunch of stuff in common. So at this point, like I said, she's going back to the person that she really is, who her true self is. You know, um, she fixes her dad's mug and, you know, she did try to bring some bouquet of flowers to apologize with a card to her teacher, but he wasn't there. That's when she finds out that he took the semester off. But then, you know, um, she gets, once she gets through with River, she gets a text message from an unknown person that said, meet me at the theater at so-and-so time. She thinking that it's probably Bestie or whatever because Bestie keep blowing her ass up because she's ignoring her at this point. She's finally realizing that she is a toxic person because no real friend would tell you to harm yourself like that um, to get out of a situation. You know what I'm saying? Um, meanwhile, River is the one that's in the theater. And he basically says, listen, I know it was you that did uh, mess with the shit at the play and had them throwing up like that, right? And she was like, so you got me here so you can blackmail me? 
And he was like, no, nah, girl, I ain't finna blackmail you. Listen, I'm just telling you, I'm giving you your props because them motherfuckers used to play with me all the goddamn time. They was like, oh, let's pick on the kid with the disability. She was like, wait a minute, I ain't know you had no disability. He was born with his heart outside his body, right? And so he had to have like six operations, four or six operations before he was six years old. Then in the process of that, he wound up getting a colostomy bag, okay? So, you know, he's all the way messed up to a certain extent, you know? And... <clears throat> They start connecting and all this stuff. And, um, you know, they become cool. And some of the things and the actions that he was, it, I don't know, he was getting a little bit too close too, real quick. And I just started peeping. I said, something about him, I like them together. But at the same time, I'm very wary because I don't trust him right about now. Something about him is just not all the way there because why are you waiting till now and then all of a sudden they get so close and they're just best friends again you know and um i did i did think it was really cute and really nice that she got a group of the kids from choir uh to go to the teacher's house and to sing a song in front of his house or whatever he was a little depressed anyway and so that was really nice he liked that um obviously you know, River and her have a connection, you know, they was about to kiss and then they get interrupted by, you know, uh, Bestie talking about something. I'm waiting for you. And she keeps on saying, I'm, 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 don't, don't, are you ghosting me? And you know, something going to happen if you do this or whatever. And I'm just like, girl, okay, you need to calm your ass down. Go find somebody else to chat with. <laughs> what? Then they have a meeting with the teacher her and her uh, father, Shelly and her father, and basically saying how she's a good student. We found out she's going to Overland College and she wants to go there because of Rivers going there. And I said, see, this is not, this is not good. This is not good. Because when you get so close, she needed therapy. And it's because one, her mother is gone and they moved to a new town and she obviously been a loner, but she became more so of a loner and an introvert. And now that she got somebody that taking interest in her, it's like anybody that taking interest in her in a so-called positive way, she gravitates and do anything and everything and want to keep them close and get real attached. Okay. And that's how she did with Bestie. That's how she's doing with River without taking into consideration that some things just may not be right. Even if it's staring us dead in our face, okay? And all of a sudden, you've only been friends with this boy for how long? Um, and now you want to go to college where he's going to college. And that's the only reason why you want to go to that college because that's where he's going. And that's your life and all that stuff. That's your best friend. And, you know, I can't live without him. And then a daddy is like, okay with it. And when she went to the library and saw him sitting there and the way that he reacted to her coming, you saw his face. It was like, oh my God, here she comes. Like he didn't really want to be bothered or something. Something about that interaction really piqued my interest. And I said, oh yeah, he knows something. Um, and right in there, I knew what was going on. I knew, I knew. She winds up telling him, you know, my father is okay with us being together and going to college. I told him, and you know, we're going to be living together and all that stuff. I said, what? Living together. And in the midst of them talking, here comes Bestie, keep on texting her and all this stuff. And she tells him, oh, she's a terrible person. She's toxic. I've been trying to, you know, um, get her to stop calling me. I've been blocking, but somehow she keeps on coming through and he goes in some way, somehow and blocks her through from everything. Do like a hard drive block. I said, Oh, okay. And he was like, Oh, okay. Well, before we do anything, uh, I want to take you somewhere. And this is when I confirmed that I knew that this motherfucker had something to do with bestie because I'm thinking like, is bestie a shapeshifter? <laughs> Like, if she shape-shifted it to people so that she could... I mean, this is American Horror Story, so anything is possible. I'm like, is she shape-shifting into this motherfucker so he, she can live and do all the stuff? But, you know, her real person is that deformed person that she is. Baby, he put her in... that Said they was going for a drive. They was in his car. Mind you, it is a van that looked like it could be used in the 1970s 
where they either smoke pot in or where you kidnap ki uh, people in, you know? And I said, why do he have this type of van as a kid, as a teenager? That don't make sense. And they was in the van so long that she had fell asleep. And when she woke up, they in this place where the houses are so separate and it's behind a gate and it just looks so far out and it looks weird. It looked condemned, right? Like, why are we here? Um, you actually, actually, you actually got a key to the freaking gate. And this is a, look like a construct, a gate that you supposed to keep out because some construction is about to happen or whatever. He opens it up and you see these houses and right in there, I knew he was going to take her to Bestie. They get into one of the houses and she was like, what's, what's going on? It's like, it's, it look abandoned and everything. Baby, when they get up in there, she turns around cause she heard something, right? And she sees the ring light in the same wall <laughs> paper from when she was talking to Bestie. I said, bitch, that nigga then took this this Bestie right here. Bestie done shape-shifted to a black man, okay? Just using that motherfucker. I said, ain't this about some bitch? Oh, no. Bestie was a real person. She wasn't no shape-shifter. You know, she was actual deformed-ass bitch that was some toxic, you know, uh, get, getting people to do shit for her just because she bored and she can't come outside and talk to people because of the way that she looked because she insecure as fuck, okay? That bitch came down the steps in a goddamn look like a lingerie leotard with a robe on. I said, uh-uh, girlfriend, baby. She was like, oh, my God. Shelby was looking like, or I should say, Shelby was looking like, oh. Next thing you know, she turned around to River like, why did you bring me here? Baby, soon as she turned around, she goes, oh. I said, no, you didn't. River then stabbed her in the goddamn chest. And she was like, why? And she died. And then she going to look at, um, he looked at Bestie and was like, now we can be together forever. I did what you said, and we could be best friends forever. And they walked out holding him. I, ain't, I don't know. I, bitch, that's an old bitch. <laughs> that's an old bitch, okay? I'm, not, I'm, I'm telling you. And I feel like the bitch been around for um centuries. That's what I feel like. You know what I'm saying? And she just be out here doing all this stuff to people, just messing up lives because she ain't got nothing better to do with hers. But anyway, that was episode one. Y'all tell me how y'all feel, and I'll see you guys in a minute for episode two. Peace.